Okay, I really have to append this video. This is the earliest one I've found so far of meter. Now I'm searching on the on the American English spelling. You'll notice that here the year is 1549. Okay, 1549 is a really important year because that's the year that John Knox got freed out of his imprisonment in Scotland and came to England. It's because of that event, which is actually prophesied in the Bible. Um, I've already covered that in the Curios references um, in uh, Frank form because I plotted them all. Yeah, 1549 is when he came out of jail and went to England because he was exiled from Scotland at that time. And he spent some years in England teaching. And guess what? Because I can't, I, I can't get my hands on his own metered translation. So it's like, well, what can I find? Well, here we go. Look right here. The, the seven penitential psalms drawn into English meter with a metrical prologue before every psalm by Sir Thomas Wyatt. This is what our boy Knox would have discovered when he came to England. There was a translation that preceded him, and of course the Stephanus Greek manuscript would come out in 1550. And that really stirred up a flurry of new translations too. But this is after Wycliffe, which was 1402. Okay, Wycliffe didn't actually translate his own Bible. It was a guy named Hereford. But that spawned a bunch of translations into English, especially after 1533, which this is 16 years after that. Because in 1533, um, Henry VIII separated England from the, the papacy in order to get his divorce so he could marry Anne Boleyn. So as a result of that, there was a flurry of new translations coming out in England. This is why Christ focuses so much on England in Psalm, in uh, Matthew 24, 25. There, there's a thing that, there's a, a rhetorical device called anaphora, and the Bible uses that to um, count the syllables and center on important periods in history. I already did the videos on that showing it with Paul in about 2010 2011 and now we're starting to do it on the matthew 25 passage matthew 24 25 passage which anoni nominon discovered last year and i wouldn't listen to him when he kept bugging me to look at it until this year it turns out that him finding it was also prophesied in matthew 25 11. I only discovered that a few days ago, and I'm still in a state of shock about it. But we're not supposed to care if it's us or somebody else being prophesied, right? You're supposed to just take the information. So here it is, 1549. That was a prophecy of John Knox. It's hitting on that year for him in Matthew 24, 25, when he would start to discover and start translating the Bible. Okay? And he was in England. And actually, the, the period of time spans him and Calvin. Because he would end up, as a result of being in England, he'd, he'd quit, you know, he'd leave England and go to Geneva to talk to Calvin. All right? Well, there you go. The meter was known then. God was making the meter known to the reformers. And they didn't figure out, as far as I can tell yet, they knew it existed. Because see, here we go. This is the earliest instance I can find of a metered translation. They knew it existed. But they didn't know the doctrinal significance, that the meter, the counts, the syllable counts are doctrinally significant. They're deliberate syllable counts to interact with the text. Now, obviously they suspected that or they wouldn't bother trying to translate the English with the same number of syllables, but they didn't apparently understand what I'm telling you. All right? This is really important. Since 1549, God's been getting this information out there. 
So should you be surprised that maybe he did? Prophesy and only nominum finding it so that we could revisit what they didn't learn the first time. Okay. Let's not get weirded out by this. Let's just learn whatever the doctrine is. And here's the doctrine. Yes, I want you to do the syllable counts. I've been telling people that since at least 1549. Actually, since before, because the initial audience for the original scripture in Hebrew and Greek, they knew the syllable counts. They used them. Peace out. Okay, well, guess what? Here's another reason why 1640 was predicted by Christ. Here's the Geneva Bible. That's not a big surprise. The Geneva Bible had come out almost a century before. I think it's based on Stephanus from 1550. Okay, look. 1641. This is now no longer um, Psalms. Song of Solomon. They thought, okay, well, we'll, we'll look that. That's got to be metered. But see, they're thinking in terms of poetry. They're not thinking in terms of meter as measure like in let's count the syllables so we can always verify we have the right memorization. Which in oral, you know, when you're orally memorizing something, um, that's what you do is you count the syllables on your hands. That's what I do. You know, around the shores that round our coast from Deal to Ramsgate span. I found alone on a piece of stone an elderly naval man. His hair was weedy, his beard was long, and weedy and long was he. And I heard this white on the shore recite in a singular minor key. Oh, I am the cook and the captain bold and the mate of the Nancy Brig. A boatswain tight and I forget the rest. I learned that when I was like 10. I'm 63 now. So you see, meter's important for memorization. They knew that. But they didn't seem to apply it to all the Bible or recognize that it's doctrinally significant to the text being metered. But at least they knew to count the syllables. 1640 is when they started coming out with these metered translations. And God decided that was really important. Do you see why? Here it is, 1641. Here it is again, 1642. This time, Song of Solomon. Because that's part of the Bible. Okay? And let's see where else it is. Metrical. See, I'm searching now on the word metrical. Alright. What's this one? That's also Psalm. Oh, it's Judah. The Harp of Judah. Or Songs of Zion, that's also Song of Solomon. That's 1837, that's a lot later. I'm looking for the earliest ones. Okay. So let's see, let's look at this one. Metrical version of the Psalms, well we have that already. Somebody's writing in the margin. This is 1560. That's after 1549 though, so. And it's still the Psalms, so I'm not I'm really worried about that one. But see, you can search on the word metrical and you can play with this yourself. Okay, this is Song of Psalms. This is Job. Okay, now let's see how early this Job is, because I already did a video on Job. This is 1610. Now the Job that I showed you is from 1878. But this is 1610. Metrical version of Job. 1610. That was also pro a prophesied year in Matthew 24. Syllable 1580, 1580, um, syllable 1580, okay? Or 15, yeah, 1580, 1581, really. But 1610, it could have been late in 1610. It could have been considered, if it was after, um, September, it would be considered 1611 in, in the Bible calendar, which starts at the autumnal equinox, which would be our old year, but their new year. Okay? So here we go. Now, I don't see anything yet there, but in 1610, metrical version of Job. Okay, and the video I did was 1878 metrical version of Job. So the metrical version of Job started being done in 1610. Getting to get the picture? 
This is happening over and over on different books of the Bible since the Reformation. So what happened? Did all the scholars of the 20th century, their brains just turn off? You guessed it. 